KBI community. Today, we'll be interviewing Buddy Deschler. Buddy is a Fredericksburg native, professional trumpet player, and instructor. He currently holds an online studio for students of all ages, is a member of the Dallas Brass, and is a performing artist for XO Brass, Dennis Wick, and Smith Watkins Cornets. He's also the artistic director and co-founder of Fredericksburg Brass and Tidewater Brass Institutes. For more information, see Buddy's link in the description below. Thank you for joining me today, Buddy. Of course. I'm so excited to share all of your accomplishments with our community. Well, this is one of my favorite places to be at KBI Music Shop, so I'm happy to be here. Yay! So I kind of want to start at the very beginning. Okay. Um, so when did you get started with music? With music? Um, hmm. So with trumpet, I started at the same age I think most Spotsylvania County music students start, which is 12 and 6th grade band over in Spotsylvania Middle School. But I started music a little bit before that. I did piano lessons. Uh, so bad. I'm so sorry, Andrew DePaul. But uh, I took piano lessons and I was just kind of going through the motions because my sister was in music. She's two years older than I am and she was doing voice and clarinet. So then it was like, okay, well, I will also do music stuff. So I took piano lessons. I didn't really practice, didn't really uh, come prepared for much, but it was, you know, just nice to like have an activity to do in addition to sports at that time. Uh, and then once I started trumpet in sixth grade, I was just like, see a piano, time, <laughs> time for time for this. I, I had a very similar experience. Yeah, piano. I think we all do. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, piano teachers. Sorry, yeah. all piano teachers out there. Um, so what made you choose the trumpet? Trumpet was my third choice. Uh, yeah, at the time, which is really funny to think about because like it is what my life is. It's a lot of what my identity is, my love, my passion, uh, my career. It's like everything. Um, but it was my third choice because the first choice was percussion. Um, and I remember just really wanted to play drums. And apparently a lot of other 12 year olds want to hit something. So mm -hmm. like by the time I tried to sign up, they were like too many. We had too many already. You got to pick something else. So I was just like, trombone looks really cool. And, but I tell people I had like this T-Rex syndrome. So like I barely had like any arm length to like do any of these positions. So then I remember my band director at the time, Dave Vita, was like, uh, what about trumpet? That's also brass. And I was like, sure. And he was like, can you go like this? And I went, and he's like, good enough. <laughs> so, and then that has embarked my entire life <laughs> from that moment on, yeah. <laughs> Fun. So when during so I guess you started around sixth grade then, yeah. and so when during your trumpet life did you decide this is going to be I'm going to pursue this as a career? I think I remember very specifically my sophomore year of high school is when because that's when they're just like, have you done your SATs? Have you done your PSATs? Have you looked at colleges yet? And I started like looking at some schools and I was like, you can major in music. And I was just like, that's great because I am super bad at math. So I'm glad that I can do something I like. Um, so I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to major in music. I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that required. But I was just like, this is the thing I'm the best at. This is the thing I love the most. And this is the thing that, you know, I feel a part of, like this kind of community, this kind of, you know, sharing and this joy. My friends were there. It's where I ate lunch, you know, in the band room and stuff. So I was like, my sophomore year is when I was going to major in music. And I had a teacher at the time, Patrick Sweeten, who started to like really introduce me to like all of these next level things like repertoire, method books, solos. Um, he even took me to work one day, which was at, at the Navy Band in D.C. So I got to see like professional musicians. So it was around that time that I knew that this was going to be like my direction. So, yeah. That's really cool. So did you have any other, you had your trumpet teacher, mm -hmm. um, were there any other people who influenced your decision at all? Uh, influenced my decision. Or I guess influenced your yeah. decision. Yeah, like, uh, so like uh, I think a couple of different things with that. First is, I remember this podcast, uh, uh, That's Not Spit, It's Condensation, uh, with Barbara Butler, who's a phenomenal world-class pedagogue at Rice, and she said that to always thank every teacher you've had because whether or not they introduced you to like that really iconic thing or like your most professional thing or whatever, but they have helped you get to whatever's the next thing. So Donna Steckler being my first band director, or sorry, uh, Dave Vita, then Donna Steckler, then Kathleen Scholler, now Jacoby, and then Don Leonard uh, in high school. 
And all these people just supported me doing this, even if it was just like, yeah, you should do band, like, or you should do all county, like, you should audition. And they all have done, like, their things in their various ways. Um, Patrick Sweeten being a main teacher for me, then Jim Pennington later on in high school. Um, so everybody has kind of, like, got me to that point, everybody. So then just all my other teachers when I was at George Mason and then University of Miami and then Peabody Institute and then Arizona State. So uh, there's been so many people just in my life that, that have done that and they just kind of have kept me going to whatever the next thing is. Uh, my main you know, mentors and influencers are Phil Snedeker um, and Joe Bergstaller and Deanna Svoboda. Um, so those are the people I probably talk to most frequently now about my my life and professional stuff in addition to just all my friends and colleagues and kbi kbi music (laughs) shop i'm serious i'm serious because uh you know when we started the fredericksburg brass institute i think kbi was in dan's basement still and they immediately still supported it like it was like a starting business but they, they sponsored the festival and they've been doing that every year and as this store has grown so much like so is their involvement in our brass festivals and also this is where I would come to hang out at night when I'm in town and this is where I would like eat food and like you know just like be back home you know whenever I was back home like you know doing music and just hanging out this is the place so KBI Music Shop thank you. (laughs) So speaking of Fred Brass Mm -hmm. and Tide Rock what like what sparked that idea? Uh, So for I'm gonna see if I can do this shortly um my friend group at the at the time growing up, Austin Boyer, Amy Loudon, Kenneth Johnson, myself, we were uh, Cortland High School, Riverbend High School, Colonial Forge, King George. And we just loved sharing music. And like we were like the the go getters, the nerds that like were like starting to like, you know, explore music a lot more. And whenever we learned something, we were like, oh, check this out, like check out this recording, check out this solo piece. And then when we all went to major in music our freshman year, that's like what like opened up everything because we were just used to this area, high school music education, which again, got us to that point. So then when we came back for like Thanksgiving break and winter break, we were just like, you have no idea what I've just experienced as a music major in college. So then we just started sharing all this new stuff. And then we're like, we want to share this with everybody in Fredericksburg, like all these young musicians, Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, Stafford, like all the, the greater area to let them know what exists outside this bubble. So like no matter what place you're in, no matter what uh, school you go to, that is still a bubble. And there's still a lot of outside things. So when coming up with Fredericksburg Brass Institute, we called it, we call it Fred Brass Zero now because we tried to do it in 2009. So we were like, just after our freshman year of college, we were like, let's do a music festival. And it didn't, you know, it didn't end up working, which is shocking that 18 year olds couldn't put on a festival. but um but the the whole idea was to share these outside influences and outside knowledge and performers and uh possibilities with this area that might not be aware of it so then we you know reconstructed it back in 2013 and then it's been a festival ever since so it's been to provide world-class brass instruction pedagogy and performance to young brass players yeah, I, I think so. Like and then you expanded it to Tidewater. Yeah, Tidewater. so you know, Fredericksburg being my hometown, um, and then the one of the other directors, Dakota Corbelis, his hometown is uh, the Virginia Beach, Norfolk area. So then he's like, I want this in my hometown because you know, for the same idea, yeah. the same mission. So we started the uh, Tidewater Brass Institute in 2017. The first festival ended up being in 2018, and so then we have Fredericksburg Brass Institute, Tidewater Brass Institute. Brass Institutes of Virginia, which is now the organization name. So maybe there's a third one. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. There's, yeah. I've, I've, I've got enough things to practice and stuff like that. But uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I love that you do that. Um, so I guess since you're trying to bring memorable experiences to students in this area, what is one of your most memorable musical experiences? From Whether this playing a- or observing? From this area or like uh, from? Just anywhere. So... It's such a great question, and there's a lot of things that could factor into it, and I think it varies from person to person. So you might think, like, is it, like, when you played the best? Is it when you were in, like, the most exciting place? Is is it when, like, 
the ensemble you were playing with was the best? Is it like when like you met a particular, so like there's all these things that tend to make it. And therefore it's really hard to say like what my favorite, you know, memorable experience would be. But I think getting the position with Dallas Brass in 2017, um, because not only is it a job that encompasses a lot of the things that I love, which is traveling, teaching, doing all these clinics and then performing, but it's like most of the show is memorized. Like we're doing like different blocking and staging and it's super audience engaging and interacting. And we're playing in all of these towns. Like we're not necessarily doing like New York city, Los Angeles, Chicago. Like we're doing, you know, Warren, Pennsylvania, Badger, Minnesota, you know, Yankton, South Dakota, like all these kind of like more like small, not even small towns, but just like real towns, like real communities. Um, so anytime I get to do that, it's it's a treat. And, you know, my introduction to Dallas Brass was my senior year of high school and Don Leonard, my band director, is like, you love brass, you love chamber music. This is a group it's called Dallas Brass. And he gave me this Dallas Brass CD, Dallas Brass 2 from 1989. Mm-hmm. And then I, I just like wore that thing out because it was hearing it, uh, like at that level hearing these and I just memorized the album I memorized the players and everything like that and it was such uh, an amazing you know eye-opening experience to what music could be as a trumpet player and now I play in that group and it's unreal That's so cool. yeah. yeah so you but you played with other groups played with a number of other groups yeah throughout I mean like there's general like I guess like freelance work or like the I-95 orchestra so it's kind of like <laughs> subbing with different groups playing with Richmond Symphony a lot um york symphony in pennsylvania so especially when i was in virginia maryland area you know kind of going up and down that coast doing a variety of of orchestral subbing um my first like touring brass stuff was with rodney marsalis philadelphia big brass did a number of things with them for a few years uh and now living in phoenix um i'm a member of the phoenix brass collective um a brass ensemble based out of there and then with dallas brass uh and yeah, just anywhere that they'll have trumpet. So I'm I'm a fan of so. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so then, okay. So you just love anywhere that has trumpet. Yeah. Yes. And so then, what is your favorite thing about trumpet <sighs> or music? Trumpet and music. So I think it's just that. I mean, some people are like, oh, it's like this heralding instrument. It's like the fanfare instrument. It's the call instrument. I love the sound, but. I think for me, it's just that it's like involved in so many things. So like even in high school, like I like really wanted to start a ska band uh, and like trumpets in in a ska band. And then like uh, you hear trumpet in orchestras, you hear trumpet in jazz, you hear trumpet in like lead playing, like with Maynard Ferguson, Bill Chase, all these, all these players. Um, And then you hear it in chamber music and in a brass quintet, you get two of them. So that's cool. (laughs) Um, So I think it's just like it's versatility and it's involvement in like all aspects of music um so it's kind of like you know another one of my favorite things which are buffets because it's just like a little bit of everything and that's what i get to do as that's trumpet i don't feel like i have to lock myself in to one thing Uh, i get to be a part of not just different genres of music but also like different people and communities that that music is associated with so just hanging out with a bunch of people hanging out playing a bunch of different kinds of music love it so, okay, so to finish up then, I guess what is one piece of advice you might give to a student that is thinking of pursuing a career in music? Uh, definitely explore and be curious. Like, always be curious. Um, something I, I tell students in master classes and my private students and just people, and I say that a curious musician will go a lot further than a talented musician. Because I've worked with so many talented musicians, both like growing up here and like throughout my life, and then they moved on to something else. And it's not that that's a bad thing or good or bad thing, but it's that who we seem to think are like the talented ones, like they're going to make it, I'm not. Um, that's not everyone's path. That might not be like what, what they end up doing, but it's that curiosity. It's that like interest, that hunger that like actually, you know, propels you to whatever the next thing is. It's the, it's the, thing that excites you to work a little bit harder it's that thing that um you know makes you a little bit more disciplined and engaged and all those things so just be curious and explore what's out there and kind of like let that be what fuels and motivates you well thank you so much for joining us yeah of course Um, i just 
we just really appreciate you as part of our community. Well, I appreciate KBI and everything that you've done for me in my career, but also this area and for all these young musicians. So thank you. <laughs>